Hello and welcome to Business Daily. This week we're taking a look at the global fashion industry and today we're talking trainers and tracksuits. Once items exclusively reserved for the sports field, now they're everywhere from the office to the catwalk. So how did the fashion and sports world collide? It all started 25 years ago when German sports brand Puma became the first in the market to collaborate with a high fashion brand. They chose fashion house Jill Sander. I think when they started, they didn't really put a lot of expectations towards it, but it became obvious very soon that there is, first of all, a, pot a commercial potential because of the fashion market and from a bigger narrative. I think the importance only stepped up after talking about the, the marriage between sports and fashion. Since then, the brand has continued to collaborate with fashion designers and celebrities all around the world, and so have their competitors, forging partnerships worth billions of dollars to the industry. Today on Business Daily, we'll be taking a look at some of Puma's most successful collaborations and finding out what they mean for business. Selena, I'm here with Puma in LA. We're doing a shoot for my new collection. I'm Walker Frazier, greatest Nick of all time, two-time NBA champion, one of the 50 greatest players of all time. I'm Alexandre Matussi. I'm the founder and designer of Ami in Paris. We are shooting the campaign for the collaboration Ami and Puma, and uh, this is very exciting. My name is Ruigi. I'm the new creative director of Bali, also the creative director of Root and CEO. Pop stars, sports stars, high profile fashion designers. Puma has collaborated with them all. And we're going to start by talking about one of their most high profile partnerships to date their collaboration with Rihanna. It's a huge library. And I couldn't think of any place more perfect for the theme of this collection. Back to school. All the clicks, all the lunch tables, all the different personalities and attitudes. Rihanna's relationship with Puma stretches back almost a decade after she joined the brand as a creative director in 2014. Heiko Deezins works closely with her as Puma's global creative director. She knows exactly what sort of product she wants to represent and comes with an idea. She's quite exceptional with this. She knows exactly, she actually comes and says, I love this shoe from the archive from you guys. What can we do with it? Why Rihanna? She represents so many things which come in very useful for us as a brand. She has a strong connection to street culture, to music. This is all what we as a brand also stand for over the last years. But then also she adapts fashion and she has established herself as a fashion icon. The Super Bowl representation with her uh, custom-made outfit, the, the high fashion world was a, a, applauding, but then she just shows up in, in a meeting with her baggy jeans and her bomber jacket and her white court sneakers, and then still the whole world talks about it. It describes pretty well how she is as a person. It's not just a stylist putting this upon her. She really lives all of those facets of styling. And that, of course, is amazing for us as a brand because it gives us so much freedom and so many platforms to, to connect her with us as a brand. She's very hands-on. She's hands-on in every color decision, in any material decision, in the style selection, and that is across all products. She even talks about and wants to uh, discuss packaging and marketing. So that is probably why the partnership with her was and is so unique in the market. And that's probably also the reason why this is a very successful partnership because there's a lot of comparable partnerships in terms of brand, um, music, entertainment, which don't really represent that. Collaborations can be negative and have negative impacts on businesses too. If you look at Adidas and their collaboration with Kanye West, they were left with $1.3 billion worth of stock. And their collaboration with Beyonce and Ivy Park also not doing particularly well for them. Is there a process behind the scenes to sort of evaluate the risk of collaborating with a personality? 
yeah, we do. We know that there's always, if it's a personality, it's always a risk behind a partnership because it's not like a business enterprise you're dealing with. You're you're dealing with a, um, a human being. How this develops and and how this goes is it's very difficult to say. So um, Adidas may might have had a bit of bad luck in in how this all turned out, but also they they have really got a lot of out of it, those partnerships. Also, I feel like with Rihanna, I mean, of course, probably the first time was we throw ourselves into this partnership with our heart and soul. And maybe that is also, we really committed to it and we really wanted to make this and we believed in it. And it was a passion behind it because everybody was thrilled to work with her. Maybe this is also a key why it all turned out so well and it, it stayed a very honest and and, um, loyal partnership. You're deciding to collaborate with her again. I know that's a recent announcement. Is there anything you can tell me about when that might be or what might be involved in that? We are working on products to be released with her. The plan is definitely towards the end of the year or beginning of next year to, to come out with first releases. So we are in full swing with her. We meet her every couple of weeks. Um, all over the globe. So we are in heavy rotation with with her. Anything she touches sells well at the moment. And if anything, she's just becoming more and more successful globally. So that can't be a bad thing for either of you, can it? Of course, we are observing um, all the, the comparable partnerships. She's just so believable with what she does, whether it's the cosmetic, the underwear. It just like is always a fit it doesn't it never really feels like okay this is a clear business enterprise and and it always feels like yeah she is the product and she uses the product and she stands behind it i feel like i believe this is exactly the the reason for the success i mean when we had the first collaboration with her and we launched the creeper the creeper itself of course was a limited what we call franchise but the creeper kicked off a whole trend in the market of classic platform court sneakers. And we could definitely build a whole line of court styles following the trend. And so did any other sportswear in the market. They were all jumping on the trend. So it kicked off a global sneaker trend for all of um, our um, the sportswear players. To look at where collaborations have arguably had some of the most success for Puma, we need to head to India. Puma is the biggest sportswear brand here, the only region in the world where it overtakes its biggest competitors, Nike and Adidas. And it's here where the brand has collaborated with India's cricket captain, Virat Kohli, a deal reportedly worth $13 million. I told them my career is growing and I want to be able to create something of my own with a big brand in India so that we can grow together. That's how I'll be invested in the business myself and I'll be thinking about how to take the brand forward rather than just being a a face on the billboard with some of the global athletes. That meant nothing to me. So when we started our conversation as well, the, the first and the only condition was, are you ready to collaborate and do something which is something personalized but also will help the brand grow? And they immediately said, give us a a big bag of what you wear and we'll do it. Like it was that instant. I would put myself in the the consumer's position. Simple as that. Like the impact I had watching my heroes play, when they they were wearing something that caught my eye, I would go back to that moment. What was the essence of what they were wearing that made me feel so connected to that shoe or that particular gear even today? I don't feel like anything goes out of fashion or anything is, you know, outdated. Everything is as relevant as, as your, your liking to it. So I would say, would I want to buy this shoe? And if the answer is yes, I would any day say, this is the design we're making. There's no doubt that Puma's had some great successes with its collaborations in India. If we take a look at where the brand is growing, Asia seems to be next on its hit list. I asked Heiko Deezins if this plays into how the brand chooses who they collaborate with next. Yes, 100%. I think specifically um, looking at Asia, there is um, um, local or regional players which have a strong impact with where, like some of us never heard about, but they are highly influential. It is key these days that 
um, we need to work with local players or influential people. One thing with a direct impact on the local markets, but also there's a lot of design uh, credibility developing um, specifically in China, Korea, uh, Japan always was a, a highly creative hub. There is a high impact on, uh, on the rest of the world on those collaborations or entertainment people. So, I mean, you, you look at all those um, Korean um, mega bands, they have sold out tours all over the world. So there is um, strong impact coming back to the different regions as well. So there's two sides to it. We really enjoy that. Um, in terms of creativity, new design uh, impulses, but also in terms of impact um, in regards to the rest of the world of, with the celebrities. We basically deal with those partners with our regional office, with our entertainment offices all over the world. We have partners in China, which we deal with in, from Shanghai office. We have Korean partners or um, Japanese partners, which we um, deal with from their local from our local representatives. And it's the same for um, North America. But also I wanna, uh, I wanna mention two things. We, we have a strong growth and an extreme success in the Latin countries. Um, Latin countries naturally, football stars have a stronger impact on growing a brand or um, um, developing a brand, and, uh, a brand and that's happening. Certainly our partnership with Neymar had a strong impact in a lot of um, Latin American countries. Now, Puma may have been the first sports brand to dip their toe in the fashion water, but now all the big brands are doing it. So how do you stand out from the crowd? Everyone was going for the big names, the big luxury names for quite a long time. And it was always bigger, more expensive, more exclusive, more advanced. All of our sportswear companies were going for the same method or approach. I think the difference with us, we kind of changed early on in the process because we've done that with McQueen. We had quite a few big names in the past. Mihara was really back big. So we, we started to go back to more the niche streetwear and the more the niche, more progressive avant-garde design brands just to keep it a bit more different and a bit more fresh. Also, it's also interesting to have those niche brands to open up complete new doors because big brands come with a quite fixed set of creative codes, which of course define, almost give you a corset to work within. That is great if it works out, but it's also a little bit limiting and doesn't allow you the freedom. So with our smaller partnerships, which we have strategically decided to go for the more niche brands, there is, a, I would say, more on the same level conversation. So it's a face-to-face -face conversation and a shaping a design coding or a design language together, because they're usually um, also still in a development phase of their own brand. So it's a bit more of an organic uh, creating something together than working with a big preset of design coding. My name is Alejandro Palomo. I created a brand called Paloma Spain about seven years ago now. Paloma Spain has really been a brand that led uh, a new way of understanding menswear and is a bit way more feminine and fluid and fun. Alejandro's brand Palomo has been collaborating with Puma for the last few years. They're currently working on their third collection together. They approach us, I think, our values um, worked very well with the direction that Puma wanted to take. We did this first collection that we launched, I think, last year, and that worked beautifully for both of us. Uh, I think both of the teams really connected from, from minute zero. So um, after the first collection, seeing the successful that it had both commercially and and with prayers and, and the images that we created and all that, then we decided to go ahead and do a second collection and then a third that we haven't seen yet, but that will come up next year. The first one we looked at like football in the 70s and the idea of the superstar football player. And then for the second one, we wanted to go into more of a very youthful, 
fresh uh, surfer skater scene no because we feel that this this kind of scene these days um is very related to fashion as well and very forward in in the way you know skaters are now wearing pearl necklaces and and painted nails and and all that so um for this for the first one we proposed football the second one we did the surf they came up with a different idea but as soon as we you know uh we come up with ours they're super happy to kind of follow up and and kind of join the join the whole idea with us so um we work very straightforward we both of the teams kind of brainstorm together for a few days um in the office in paris uh, months and months of forwarding emailing and and you know exchanging images and and kind of following the process but as i said i i'm completely free really what has the collaboration done for your brand or commercially for you has there been a knock on effect of collaborating with such a big sports brand like Puma definitely definitely I mean there is there is the aspect that they can put a product with my name on it in the hundreds of shops that they have around the world like I was uh, walking around the Fifth Avenue in September um, uh, with my family and all of a sudden we passed by the Puma store and there's like the whole window shop is covered in in Palomo and that's something that I would never be able to do uh, being you know a smaller independent brand so there is that aspect that the word have been spread around the world without together with Puma but I wouldn't have been able to do that by myself. And then there is the second aspect that really joining with a brand like Puma gives my brand a certain credibility and a certain confidence to new customers as well. You know, we've seen a lot of new customers coming in from that and and we've seen that the credibility of, of the brand has grown as well for those customers that first came uh, and bought the Puma collaboration because they were familiar with and then they stay with us and now they're a, a Palomo customer too. Collaborations certainly have benefits for both the sports brand and for whoever they partner with, whether that be a global celebrity or an independent fashion designer. And with such commercial success, it's certainly a business model that isn't going away anytime soon. That's all from today's episode of Business Daily, produced and presented by me, Hannah Mullane. Thanks for listening.